the problem I have tends to be getting it configured with my editor and then triggering a session. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing, you know, in your example, it's a pretty, you know, you're you're doing the index.php. What if you're, you know, you're doing something like Code Igniter where you've got the front controller and you got all these other files loading in, and I want to go debug a controller or a model or a view file. Is there a way to trigger it so that it starts debugging in, in a an included or required file? Absolutely. Or does it always have to be uh, from the first page? Of course, it always starts at the beginning. Um, but what you can use are breakpoints. Uh, by clicking on the line number here, if you've used NetBeans, you probably experience, especially if you're new to NetBeans, you probably experience this uh, frustrating uh, UI feature where you click on a line number and the line turns red, and you're like, what the heck is that? That's, that is your breakpoint for debugging. Uh, a lot of IDs actually use that feature, but uh, you can stick a breakpoint anywhere in your code execution line. Uh, and as soon as the debug gets to that point, it will stop bringing your attention to it. Okay. And you can move through that. And I think you made one thing. You can also, um, he initiated it through the, the string at the top, but you, there's also functionality you can put within your code to trigger, like pro, start profiling, I think, or something, to trigger through functions. So you can tell it, you know, just start profiling this section of code. Pro so you're not so, profiling so, or debugging? Pro, the profiling portion of it, not, not the debugging, I guess, the, the, but the profiling portion, you can actually put functions in your okay. code to start and stop. So you could actually get a file just for one area you want to focus on if you want. Okay. Per se. That'd be this line here, debug break. So that's a manual code breakpoint that you could, code, uh, they could add in there. That's what you'd like to do. Yeah, the, in order for that to work, do you have to have the active debug in the URL? Uh, no, no, you shouldn't have to have the X debug in the URL. What you um, what you have to do though is have your IDE ready and waiting for the X de uh, for the um, debug output to come to it. Okay. Uh, in NetBeans, you have to actually uh, tell it to uh, um, go into debugging mode and <coughs> contact it. Okay. And by pressing debug file here that actually tells it to do that. Uh, I believe, I actually haven't used that approach. Do you know the test debuggers which you've used it to take that away? I'm not on our there. Okay. This doesn't look like it. Uh, in that case, what I might recommend doing is starting debugging a particular file and then not following that debug path. Um, firing up in the debug instance or loading up another browser. My, my editor doesn't have a built in debugger, so I'll sometimes put the start and stops and get the cache grind file and look through those manually or with web grind or something. So that's just that actually is a good point. Uh, not all IDEs have it, but many IDEs do. Uh, and they have a list here of all the IDEs that support remote debugging. Or many of them, I should say. Um, NetBeans, of course, Notepad++. Um, and there are actually a few that aren't listed here, but if yours isn't on this list, PHP Eclipse, you're ready to go. Yeah. Or should be with the installation of a couple of plugins. Like the web cache grant he has installed, you don't need any debugging in your editor or anything to use that. You can just throw that on your server and use it, load the files, and view that those you know, the simple, that stuff easily. Uh, this is what the grind file looks like on the outside. Uh, and these files are portable. You can generate them on one machine and stick them on a machine with web grind, like you were saying. Uh, they are, they can get, like I was saying earlier, they can get pretty big, 4.3 megs for this WordPress one. Uh, a lot smaller for simpler scripts, several K, several hundred K. And if you are using the manual method, don't like leave it out on the public server. You can crash your server really quickly because it takes a lot of memory to build those files. And if you like publish a URL to something you're testing with that on, and more than like five people go to your site, your server mysteriously disappears from the internet. <laughs> it also slows down the execution of the script. It does. Yeah. This is just a look at the exciting life. 
Why do you move those around? Like, how do you use those? You're talking about developing with other people? Uh, you might develop with other people. You might put them on a remote server that doesn't, uh, for example, have web grind installed. You don't want to install it. Uh, if you have a remote server, you can generate a grind file, uh, FTP it down to your computer, and then use Kcash grind on it. Just to analyze it and look at it. That's right. So it's, it's Xdebug that's making the grind file. Which one's making the grind file? Xdebug is making the grind file. And then these other tools, the web grind is remote to look at it. And the KCAR, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. KCash grind is local. That's okay. Local. Okay. And uh, web grind, if you run it on the box uh, that you actually generated the uh, grind file in the first place, uh, it's pretty convenient. It just reads in uh, the, uh, the configurations for uh, Xdebug and it knows where those grind files are automatically. That's why I moved the old ones, old ones into a different direction, to just kind of clear up the clutter for us. Um, and uh, it's almost zero configuration in many instances. There is zero configuration in many instances. Uh, web grind, unfortunately, is not very well documented on their uh, Google Code site, um, but there are many blog posts out there. I have a quick Google search will um, take you many tutorials if you have any other questions on them. Thank you very much for uh, your questions and for paying attention.